Welcome to Courageous Conversations with Lionheart Coaching Co., where we talk about the hard parts of our journey and the courage it can sometimes take to find our way back to ourselves. I'm your host, Mandy Woodard, and on this episode, we're going to talk about the importance of rest. I'm going to share with you some different types of rest because there's more than one, believe it or not. And then I'm going to talk to you about the benefits and why it matters so much. And then I'm going to also give you some things you can do. All right, let's get started. Happy mid-December. I cannot believe that it is (laughs) mid-December. This year just has flown for me anyway. I feel like it's different for everyone. And depending on what season of life you're in, it might feel really slow. It might feel really rushed. Eh, You know, it's that thing. Time is so funny, right? For me, though, I feel like this has been a very packed year. Like a lot happened in this year and a lot of good things happened this year. I was just telling my husband the other day that I feel like I was less stressed this year than I have been in several recent years, not just the last two, not just, you know, COVID years, the other years also. And it's really because of a couple things. One being having leaned into the topic that I'm actually going to dive into with you today, but also living in alignment with myself and honoring who I am and what I need. And Wow, how powerful is it when we can do that? That's why I preach it all the time. (laughs) All right, so before we dive in, you know I already went and got my cup of coffee. I'm sitting here with my coffee cup. And I have to shout out Brandon with Cordial Coffee. He provided this for me for the show. And he's so kind. He has a discount code. So if you want to get started on some monthly subscriptions, or he even has K-Cups. I was checking out his shop the other day, and he has K-Cups on there also. You can use the code PODCAST for $5 off your first order. I also have to give him a little shout out. He has a podcast about coffee on Spotify, and it's pretty good. I was learning things that I didn't know like at all about coffee, I just like coffee. I don't know the details of it, but after listening to him, I feel like I've learned so much and they're just little bite-sized episodes. So five minutes at a time. So go check that out. It's called Coffee Convos. Okay. So the other thing I'm just going to say is this is the last solo episode of the year. I have an interview that'll go live on the 19th, and I cannot wait for you to hear that. My friend Claire came and was talking about her journey, and gosh, I don't know how I've lucked out so much with my guests coming and having such good perspective and wisdom to share, but I really, I really can't wait for you to hear it, and I think it's a great one to end the season on, so yes, it will be the end of the season. And then we are going into our rest period, my rest period, which is exactly what I want to talk to you about today. And I do feel like I talk about taking breaks and resting a good amount, but I don't know that I ever really dive into it. And that's, that's the goal here today is to dive into this with you. So to begin, I really want to talk about what happens when you don't take time to rest. Because that's going to then make it so you can understand why it's so important. And maybe you know it's important. It's like one of those things that we hear all the time, but we don't actually do because we're like, yeah, yeah, I know. Just like I know I have to drink so much water a day. Just like I know I need this much sleep at night. It is one of those things that we hear and we're like, yeah, yeah, we know, we know. But sometimes it takes us getting hit by a boulder to realize we need to listen. So what's that boulder for you? Are you so stressed out to the max that you cannot function? Maybe your brain function is just way off and you're forgetting things. You're making mistakes. 
You then end up feeling overwhelmed because you got to correct those mistakes. Oh boy, have I been there. I feel like I'm kind of there right now. Like I'm speaking in ways to my family that I don't want to be speaking. And I keep telling my husband, I need a rest. I need rest. I need rest days so that I can reset. Because when we don't rest and we get to that point, our patience is not what it could be. We're not patient. We end up feeling super irritable. That definitely happens to me. And I know why, and I I will dive deeper into that. It's a sensory thing, but I'm going to talk about that specifically here in a little bit. But I get irritable, we get mood swings, and we're back and forth and snapping very easily over things that really don't need that kind of a reaction. We end up with health issues, so we get sick. That's a big one. That's a super big one. It's like if you don't take time to rest, your body is going to find a way to make you. And that could come in the form of catching the flu or cold, whatever. So it really greatly impacts your immune system. The other thing that's been proven to be impacted is your weight So obesity is more likely when you don't take breaks because chances are you're just eating whatever's quick and easy and you're not able to really fuel your body with the nutrients it needs. If that's happening, then it's time to take pause and reevaluate because it doesn't just matter because of how you may look. It matters because you are what you eat. And if you're not fueling your body with nutrients, then you turn into a sloth or, you know, it's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to keep energy all day. It's just this domino effect. So if you're go, 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 you're not taking any breaks and you're just grabbing what you can, you end up slowing way, way down until you're forced to stop. That's what we want to avoid, though. We want to be able to pause on our own without being forced to take such a a break because our body is like enough, enough with it. The other thing that comes with it is that feeling of burnout and overwhelm. You feel overwhelmed. And then that story of not being good enough starts to play out because you're so overwhelmed and you're trying to do all the things and you're trying to juggle all the, all the different balls in the air or spinning all the plates, whatever little metaphor you want to add in there. And you know that you're not doing it well. And then you don't feel good about yourself. And the stories begin. I actually was telling the story of that for myself to one of my clients this week, because that's what happens to me. I try to do all the things. I think that I should be able to do all the things. Why do I think that? Probably because that's what has been taught to us all. You must be the working mom and also the homemaker and the chef and the taxi driver and pay the bills and do all the finances. And I'm saying all this and you must know that I have a very supportive, helpful husband. And I don't even like putting it that way. We are partners and he does things just as much as I do, oftentimes more, (laughs) truthfully. And I know he's probably going to listen to this. I'm just putting it on the record, honey. Oh, he know you do more dishes. <laughs> but on the days that I feel like I should be doing it all and then I try, I fail. Because we can't possibly do it all. And then I feel like I'm not good enough. I think he probably has that happen too. If I'm working a lot of long hours and he's a little overwhelmed with all of the chores and duties We've had this conversation many times. So we have to be able to delegate, but we also have to allow ourselves rest time or we start that, that story, that limiting belief that we're not good enough because we are so overwhelmed because we were not meant to do it all. We really weren't. The next thing I want to talk about with this of what happens when you don't is if you don't take breaks, you're going to wind up quitting. Whatever it is, 
you have to be able to take breaks in segments, like no matter what it is, take a break, take a vacation from work. It doesn't mean you need to go somewhere. You can take a vacation and stay home. I think that belief is out there that if you're taking a vacation, then you need to go on a vacation, which only can cause more stress sometimes because then you got to plan a bunch of stuff. You got to pack up everybody. You got to make arrangements for animals that you leave behind at home. You have to pay for it, which can also be stressful. And maybe it's not. Maybe it's not stressful for you to get away. Sometimes it is for us. Sometimes it's not. We chose not to do that this year. We chose to like take a break from travel. So there you go again. We took another break in a different area of life this year. But I think that in the days of social media, there's a lot of us that feel like we need to stay present on there for work. And this is the most relevant for me when I say take breaks so you don't quit is because of that which I have completely changed the way I operate on my social media this year. I know it would be better if I showed up regularly, but right now that's not in alignment for me. And it would only add this layer of stress that I don't want. So you get to decide. Right now I'm taking a break. I'm posting when I feel called to post. And maybe eventually I will hop back in and do more. But for now, instead of quitting completely, I'm just taking a break and doing what I can. And I think we need to encourage just a little bit more of that. It's okay to take a break, take breaks so you don't quit. And that kind of brings me into my next topic of rest. (laughs) We live in this society where it's like more, 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 more. Overindulge, hustle, hustle sister, hustle hard. Ugh, gosh, I lived by that for a while there. I did. I lived by that saying, hustle hard. And, you know, it's just not sustainable. It really isn't. I like the idea of hustling and seasons because there are times where we have to pick up the pace a little bit. Maybe you're starting something new. Maybe you're diving into a new business or a new journey, or you have this creative project. Oh, I love the creative projects that keep me up all night. That might look like hustle to somebody else. Actually, it's just really feeding that part of your soul. And to start businesses, it looks like hustle. And I guess that is what it is labeled, but that's an art form to me. And when I started my coaching company this year, I was so invested in my website and making new videos and all of the things. That was a little bit of a season of hustle there for me. When I was starting the podcast, I had a little bit of hustle going on, learning the new program, how to edit them, getting all of the stuff, studying, watching videos, all kinds of stuff to learn. How do I do this? How do I put this out into the world? So it looks like hustle, but that's seasons. We hustle in seasons and then we take breaks so we don't quit. I think I especially feel called to talk about rest because of my human design type. And I've mentioned human design on here a few times. Um, The short, very quick description of human design is it is your energetic aura. It is a blueprint of your aura. And if you want to learn more about it, go back and listen to either my first or second episode. I talk a whole lot more about it. But there are four different types My type is the projector type. Projectors are here to guide the other energy types, but we have less energy. (laughs) This was the most satisfying thing to learn when I learned about human design because I have always been told in one way or the other or even made feel just by society's standards, not by a particular person, that I'm lazy or I shouldn't need naps or things like that. But that's literally my type (laughs) is I need rest. I'm open. So I take on other people's energies very easily. Well, that is until I learn to shield myself. That's a conversation for another day though. But it was draining. 
So when I see people all day in the office, the reason why I'm only in the office one or two days a week is because when I am just in somebody else's energy, it drains me and then I'm very tired the next day. So I allow myself rest days after my office days. It's the only way I would be able to do this sustainably. Rest is a huge part of who I am. And projectors here to being here to guide the other energy types, I feel like it's my duty, it's my job as a human to remind you to take rest, to take breaks. Because just because you're not a projector doesn't mean you don't need rest. You might be tired a lot too. We got to look at that. We got to see what's going on there. I'm also a hermit in my profile lines. So your profile lines are part of your design. They are the role you're here to play. And I am that second line, which is referred to as the hermit. And it is a necessity for me to be able to isolate myself and either study something or have that rest or even just veg out on the couch and watch TV. So I get it both ways. <laughs> I get it. I get it from multiple areas in my chart. But for the longest time, I wasn't listening to my body. And I'm saying all this to you because I want to encourage you to listen to your body. So regardless of your human design, maybe you have no idea what your design is. Your body is going to tell you what you need to know. You don't need a chart to tell you that. You just need to lean in and listen. If I leaned in and listened to my body a long time ago and shut out society, I would have 1000% accepted the fact that I just function better when I get a 20 minute nap in the afternoon. And I do and did. I have taken naps pretty much my whole life, probably. Because even in high school, I set it up so that I would get out of school early before I had to go to practice or work. I would take a nap. Even when I was a young mom and my boys were younger, I would always lay down with them. And when they say nap when the baby naps, you don't got to tell me twice. No problem. I'll do that. (laughs) And then there were a few years there where I couldn't get through a day if I didn't. And it's because I had so much on my plate. I was running a photography business and it was very taxing on me. And if I did not nap halfway through the day, then we weren't making it. We weren't making it to dinner time. So listen to your body. I feel like that is the most important thing we could ever do is just listen to our bodies. And here's the other thing. It's not laziness. If you want to lay down for an afternoon, that is not laziness. Listening to your body and your body saying, hey, I need some sleep. It's not laziness. I don't like the term laziness. I don't know, present it to me in a way where it's valid and maybe I'll consider it, but I pretty much hate that word. I don't believe in it. I don't believe we're lazy because we don't do the dishes. We just don't like doing the dishes. I don't believe we're lazy because we didn't fold our laundry. Uh, Maybe you just don't like folding laundry. So you drag your feet and you procrastinate. Next thing you know, you got five baskets of clothes lining the walls of your bedroom. Been there, still there. Current situation, actually. (laughs) Does it mean I'm lazy? No. It just means I don't like laundry. We have to stop identifying rest time as laziness. Like, rewrite that story right now, please. Okay, I want to share something now. Because about a month ago, I saw a post on Facebook talking about hibernation in the wintertime. And winter solstice is coming up. It is the 21st of December. And this is the thing. Everybody talks about feeling more depressed this time of year. And I don't want to invalidate that because it is highly possible that you have winter blues. But what I would like is if you could explore that and dive into that and ask yourself, why? Why do you have winter blues? Is it because it's hard to take that time to rest? Are you having a hard time because this is stirring up a part of your healing? 
that needs to happen. I wanted to read a little quote from the post. It says, winter takes away the distractions and the buzz and presents us with the perfect time to rest and withdraw into a womb-like love, bringing fire and light to our heart. I love it. I love it so much because I do truly believe in that hibernation and that we're called to kind of go inward and sit with ourselves and hear our inner voice. And maybe if you normally have this, you normally have these winter blues, if you actually sat in meditation or did a peace practice, would it feel differently? Maybe you pull your journal out. Maybe if you are feeling those winter blues, you actually write about them. See what comes up. See what's stirring. What feelings are coming to the surface. I just really would love to help shift the perspective on that winter time feeling. Because even if it feels heavy or it feels negative or you feel miserable, your feelings are there to teach you something. So when they start to come up, if you take the time to identify them, just kind of hang out with them for a little bit, You might really learn something about yourself. You might really start to discover some things. But the other thing is, is there's got to be some sort of connection with the fact that we feel that way after this so hectic holiday season. And maybe you feel like you shouldn't. Maybe you feel like you shouldn't be feeling that way because the month has passed now. Like, let's say we're at the last week of the year and we're going into the new year and we're, we're feeling those winter blues. Did you ever consider that maybe you're just now unwinding from the chaos that, that you experienced in November and December? Possibly even October because we got stuff in there too. Especially if you're a parent, it's like heavy sports season, Halloween, jump into Thanksgiving, jump into Christmas. There's multiple events packed into that time period. I feel like December, some years can feel like I'm just being put in this pressure cooker. So much pressure. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Holidays can feel hard too. You know, maybe you didn't run around, but just the holiday itself was hard, especially if you have trauma around it, or even if you just had a toxic family system, you know, and even if you've made the decision not to go around that family anymore, it can still feel hard. Or maybe you did go around them and now you're having to process all of that Your aunt said this to you and your uncle said that to you and your cousin acted like this or your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, whoever it is. It's like this crash, this post-Christmas crash that happens. And if you really participate in the season, then you've got your, your, you have Christmas and then you jump into New Year's. Chances are you have some alcohol, some alcoholic beverages That tears your gut up, which is your second brain. And then you get into January and you're like, I don't know. I feel like so depressed right now. My love is because of everything you just experienced. Give yourself some grace. By the way, no judgment if you do drink alcohol. I don't want it to come off like that. But it can have an effect on us. It can be a factor. And we do tend to overindulge around the holidays. Food, alcohol, family, events. It's too much sometimes. It's a lot. Not to mention having to buy presents for everyone. I mean, that's supposed to be a joy-filled thing. But what if you're not in a position to do it? It doesn't feel joyful when you're not. So if you have this family system that was toxic, still is toxic maybe, and you're around them, well, that depression is... Likely not depression exactly. I'm not diagnosing here, by the way. 
It's the old feelings that are resurfacing from the moments that you just experienced. And what can you do to process that? What are some things you can do? You know, everybody likes to start the gym in the new year. And I don't disagree with that. Like, let's get physical. Let's get healthy. (laughs) But what if instead we started sitting with a therapist or hired a life coach or went and got Reiki or a massage? You know what? That's actually what I'm doing this year. My birthday is five days after Christmas. I'm I'm not complaining. <laughs> I was born when I was meant to be born, and I believe that. But my birthday is triggering for me. It really can be some years. Not always, but some years it is. And oh, I love my mom. She tries so hard. <laughs> she used to take Christmas down before my birthday so that I could feel the separation, that it didn't have to be Christmas and my birthday. But actually, I was thinking about that today. And I was like, I don't know that that actually bothers me. I think there might be some other things, but I don't know if it's that. But I definitely appreciated the effort. But this year on my birthday, I scheduled myself a massage and Reiki healing. Normally, I'm like, I don't want to, I want to lock myself in my bathroom. I'm going to soak in my bathtub. I don't want to be talked to. I just want to be left alone. Maybe I'll talk more about that one day. I don't know that I've fully identified it. I think I do know a good bit of some of it, but for the most part, I don't know that I've fully identified what happens for me on my birthday. I think some of it is just natural. Like I've heard projectors aren't super crazy about their birthdays. So it could be part of that too. But I decided to be proactive this year. And so that's what I'm doing. And I will be doing that again in January for that self-care self-love stuff so that I can give myself space and grace and the ability to truly rest. And maybe a massage does not rest for you. Maybe going and somewhere at all is more work than it's worth. Maybe you do need to just lay in bed and watch Netflix all day. Maybe you need a two hour long soak in the tub. There's no wrong way to rest, by the way, as long as you are actually resting. (laughs) But you know what I love, though, is the growth that comes. And I don't go into a restful season with this expectation that I'm going to grow. But I always come out on the other side having learned something. And I think that that's true for most people. Is when you allow everything to get quiet and you're able to really decompress then that's when that inspiration flows through to you. That inner voice is now, you can hear it. It's not being drowned out by everybody else's voice. So my favorite thing is coming into February, March, and all of those ideas, all of that brain dumping from things that may have come up, I can now create something. And it feels good to start something new in the spring. I mean, that is literally the picture of new life. It's happening all around us. So to be able to create this new thing, whatever it may be, a business or maybe just a painting, it feels good. It feels good to do that in that space. All right, let me dive into the different types of rest. So there's the obvious, which would be physical rest. That's sleeping and napping, taking a break from the gym, like a rest day. And then there's mental rest. So allowing your brain to slow down. I find that I do this every time that I meditate or I practice Reiki. So you can add that into your daily routine. Take some time to practice meditation. A lot of times meditation feels hard for us because we're not used to it. We're not used to quieting the mind. And I've got to tell you, your thoughts are never going to stop. And that's a huge misconception with meditation is we think that means that our thoughts must stop. They don't stop, but there is a flow that happens and you allow them to come in and you allow them to go out and it helps slow things down. And that's the goal is to slow it down. Then there's sensory. This is a big one for me. I have to take breaks from things that are overloading my senses. I was in Target with my husband this week. And I told him, I am so irritable 
walking through here and there is absolutely nothing happening, but it's all the people, all of the noise, all of the chatter, even the lights didn't have a headache or anything. It's just that I was tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep. So because of that, it felt like sensory overload. And at that point, I can't even look at my phone screen. I have to be able to completely shut it out. And we do. We have to put the phone, the computer, maybe even shut the TV off so that you can get a full break. Your senses need a break. My eye doctor, I love him. He always is encouraging the kids to go stare at the trees. Go stare at the trees so your eyes can adjust back to slow, back to reality. Um, He tells them that when they're gaming, make sure you take a break every so many minutes and look out your window at the trees. (laughs) But I want to take it one step further. Go sit outside or go sit by a window and just stare at the trees. It's going to help with that sensory overload. The next type of rest is creative, to create, to allow yourself to get into that creative state. And it's not to withdraw from creating things. It's actually to lean into creating things because this can also help your brain. And when we feed that creative part of our soul, it just, it it grows us in such a way. And so many people say they're not creative. No, we are all creative. We are all meant to create. Maybe what you're creating looks different than what I create. Maybe you create um, a strategy, a plan, solve a problem in your creative process. Maybe somebody else is going to write a song or journal. Somebody else might paint. Being creative looks very different. I do love this kind of rest maybe because I'm a little bit more into that creative side of things. But lately, instead of scrolling my phone, I've decided to start sketching. I only started this like a week ago. (laughs) I used to do it a lot, though, as a teenager. I would lay and listen to my music and just draw whatever I wanted or whatever I could think of. And I decided to do this the other day with my daughter because... I told her I wasn't going to look at my phone. That's a big thing is making sure I put my phone away and I spend quality time with her. But I found that I was getting kind of bored because I've gotten so used to scrolling on my phone. So I started drawing and now I'm finding that it's extremely relaxing. So find something creative that you can try. Maybe you try it for the first time and you can decide whether you like it or not. The next kind of rest is emotional. So if you're especially emotional, then it's good sometimes to just allow yourself a break there. If you're dealing with something hard, maybe in a relationship or whatever, take a break from it. It's okay to just allow your feelings to come up and sit there. Um, we don't always have to have those complicated or hard conversations that we feel like we have to have. So I would say the thing that I'm really being called to say here is if you have something major happening in your life and major emotions are coming up with that, allow yourself permission to just not think about it for a day. Watch a movie, go for a walk, Maybe go out on a little adventure, whatever feels good for you, but allow yourself to just separate from it for today or even whatever day comes up, maybe not today, but take that break, take that break from whatever it is that you're trying to work through. The next type of rest is social. Now I find this one to be very important. We have to take social breaks. We cannot be in other people's energy all the time. I feel this from a Reiki practitioner standpoint, as well as a human design standpoint. We have got to get out of each other's auras. We just got to. You have to be able to get in your own so that you can clear yourself. And honestly, I would do this as much as you can and as often as you can. And then last is spiritual spiritual rest. Now, this is again like creative. It's not going away from it. It's actually leaning into it. And especially coming into the time of year that we are where people begin to feel depression, I often like to share that I find depression 
there's clinical depression, but then there's also that depression that is you're just being called to go into a deep rest. And maybe you're in spiritual crisis and it's time to lean into some sort of spiritual practice and whatever that looks like for you. I think we are told we have to do this, 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 and this, and it's all just a bunch of bullshit. If you ask me, what feels right for you? Are you a good person? Are you respectful? Are you kind? That's what matters. You don't have to be tied to a religion to have a spiritual practice. Explore it. Explore different things. I love the book, Sacred Contracts. I've actually highlighted it on here before. But in the beginning of the book, she talks about all the major religions. And then she just talks about spiritual practice in general. And I learned so much from her. And I think it's good if you feel like you're in conflict, in spiritual conflict, or you're not sure what you believe, just dive in and start reading some things. That book would be a good one. And I will link that in the show notes. So if you didn't catch what I said or who it was by, I'll put that there. But it is Sacred Contracts by Caroline Mace. That's C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E-M-Y-S-S. She also has a book called Anatomy of the Spirit. So if you are in that space, I would encourage you to check that out. All right, so let's talk about some things you can do. Because I talked to you about what happens if you don't rest. I've talked to you about the different types of rest. Now I want to talk to you about some things you can do. And I know I shared a little bit as we went through the types, but I want to kind of reiterate a couple things. The biggest thing, though, that I want to say about what you can do is to create a routine, a daily practice, whether it's in the morning or at night. And then even if you just do it a couple times a week, that's okay. It's all right if you can't do it every single day. What matters is that you are consistent. So if you're consistent with your practice two or three times a week, that's great. If you can consistently do the practice every day, that's awesome too. Consistency compounds though. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It's that idea that if we don't do it the way we say we're going to do it and stick to this structured schedule, then we quit because we don't think we can do it. No. Okay. Let me just tell you again, consistency compounds. So Create a daily practice or weekly practice and do it when you can and know that it's okay if you don't do it for a few days and then you jump back in. It's okay if you miss a week and then you jump back in. Just don't all out quit because you feel like you can't be consistent. So a good routine is, ooh, let me tell you mine. Okay, lately this is what I've been doing. And I've also told a few of my clients to to maybe try this as well. So in the morning, I drink warm lemon water and then I make myself breakfast and then I have my coffee. So my quiet practice begins when I wake up and then I intentionally go over to the water kettle and cut it on. And then I get the lemon and the cutting board and the knife and I am practicing mindfulness as I slowly cut the lemon. I'm only cutting the lemon. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not doing anything else. I am only cutting that lemon and then squeezing it and then adding it to my cup. And then I intentionally decide what I'm going to eat. It's usually eggs. So I crack the egg and then I'm only cracking the egg. That's all I'm focused on and then so on and so forth. This is mindfulness. This is practicing mindfulness. And it's my daily practice. Now, contrary to what you might think, don't meditate every day. I just am not able to, or I forget, or I have other things going on. So I meditate a good number of times a week, and that's good. That's my weekly practice. The other thing is monthly, monthly maintenance. So what can you do? Can you block a whole day out or a whole weekend out once a month where you don't allow social events on your calendar? Maybe you take the time to soak in the tub 
or schedule that massage daily, weekly, monthly. Find what works for you though. I could encourage you to do all of them, which I do and I try to for myself. But again, what works for you? That's what you have to lean into. Listen to your body. Another one of my favorite forms of rest actually comes in an intuitive walk. So going for a walk and then intuitively being led down whatever path you feel called. Maybe you stop and spend some time with a certain plant or you notice some animals. So you sit and watch. Take your time. Allow your intuition to guide you. This is a great way to connect with that inner voice. And then the last one I'll talk about today on here is vegging out on the couch, (laughs) which can look bad because of what we've been taught and what society says. But Netflix and chill, my friend, do it. You probably need to allow yourself that opportunity to just lay and do nothing but watch TV. And remember, that is not laziness. Okay? So with all of that being said, I am going to very much be leaning into my resting period, that hibernation that happens for me every winter. And only when I've resisted it has it felt hard. We are leaning all in. I leaned all in last year and I am so ready to do that again. I saw the value and now I'm going to do it again. So we will be taking the month of January off for podcasting. I'll be back in February with season two, and I cannot wait for that. But I know if I don't take a break, then there's a chance I might quit because I crash. And I love putting out weekly podcasts, but it is a lot of work. So that rest time is important. The other thing that I'm putting on Paul's are my Reiki circles because it adds to the time that I have to be out in in the office. And I love those as well so much, but I'm really honoring my body this year. And I want to encourage you to do that too. So even if you can't take significant time off of work, what else could you do to allow for more rest in your life? Could you cut a couple of things? You just got to Look at your calendar, see what you can do, and then go from there. All right, my friend, it has been so lovely. Please come back next week for Claire's interview, and then I'll post a little snippet on the 21st. That's my plan. I want to share one last goodbye, I guess, for the season. But thank you for being here. I am so grateful. And remember, as always... You are loved, you are valued, and you are appreciated. Bye now.